Hello, everybody. I hope you've all had a wonderful work week. And speaking of work, are you at work while you watch this? And where is that? Are you at home? Are you in an office? You're in a coffee shop? Walking through an airport on your way to an Airbnb in some foreign land for the next six months? Well, if consulting firm McKinsey has it just about right, about half of you, 58%, are probably seeing this in a place that's not an office building. Well, that is if you're part of the 90% of employees that McKinsey says chooses to take advantage of working one day at least per week remotely. Wait a minute, 58% of 90% carry the four and give them the two. That's a whole lot of math, and that's a lot of confusion and a weird set of numbers. And that's got this whole remote work thing in a bit of a tizzy. Want to know what we think that tizzy is? Well, this is what's new that you need to lead in marketing. Let's roll. Hello, everybody. Robert Rose here with the content and marketing strategy news. It is what's new, but you know, it's what's important in our world of marketing. And for the best and best practices, you can go subscribe over to contentmarketinginstitute.com. So there has been quite a bit of news recently about remote work. Zoom made headlines last week, misleading headlines, I might add, about forcing its workers back into the office. The truth is that Zoom is actually asking employees within a 50-mile radius to come into the office at least two days per week. That really is a heck of a lot different than the headlines proclaiming that the work-from-home trend is over and Zoom is killing it. They're basically asking everybody to come back to work. No, what they're actually doing is asking local employees to work in the office 40% of the time. Now, if you had seen the headline in 2019 that said, Zoom allows even local employees to work 60% of their jobs from home, well, you might have come to a much different conclusion about where the work from home trend was heading. But this week, we found out that agency giant Publicis is the latest to ask employees to come back to the office. Apparently, according to a memo obtained by Adweek, all U.S. marketing service employees must now establish time in the office three days per week. And that includes traveling for business and client site meetings. Publicis now joins Omnicom and WPP as big agency holding companies that are having their employees put at least three days of work into the office location. Now, there's no doubt that the pandemic has structured a complete disruption of work from home, a trend, by the way, that has been growing for at least the last two decades. This graph from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that the total number of people doing some or all of their work from home grew from 19% to 24% from 2006 to 2015, and it's only gone higher since then. A recent McKinsey study found that 35% of job holders can work from home full-time, 23% can work part-time. Basically, this represents a remarkable 58% of employees who have the option to work from home or all or part of the week. So it's definitely here. The remote work trend is here. But my take is that there are interesting challenges that make all these numbers a little more nuanced and the math a little more complicated. I have two anecdotal observations about the whole work from home remote work trend, especially as it pertains to marketing teams. The first is those numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, well, they fascinate me. Because a lot of the research that was going on 10 years ago, it was much more about what work could be done remotely and perhaps not so much about the work that should or wanted to be done remotely. In other words, this was a factor of looking largely at work-life balance trend that showed how in today's digital age, many information workers took work home with them. They could do what could normally be done in the office at home or at night or on weekends using their computers, their laptops, and the internet. It was a function of measuring a much different thing. Interestingly, that was when we were looking at the prevailing sentiment among workers about not actually wanting to do more work from home. And the second is that now that working remotely has become so desirable for many information and creative service workers, we're seeing the move to kind of a hybrid kind of situation, much like what we see with Zoom. And it's providing some really interesting and unintended challenges, namely synchronization. Many managers that we're working with are really struggling with how to ensure that the key benefits of having people in the office are actually there. Of course, those benefits are usually the interpersonal relationship building, the proximity of decision making, the lack of communication overhead, and all of that. But in a world where any one third of our team may be out in any given part of the week, well, then you're just trading remote work locations. Being in the office is literally just another remote work spot where everybody's still on Zoom communicating. 
we're seeing many, many companies flex well into this and succeeding and getting their teams to agree on which days they'll all come in. But that's a new wrinkle in a very new challenge. And one thing, only one thing I know for sure is that despite the headlines, none of this remote work is even nearly settled with most businesses. We really don't know long term what the ramifications will be of remote work, good or bad. Now, what we do know is whether it's remote or in office, it's requiring a whole heck of a lot more leadership communication and team building. And that's something that's going to become a new and sharp managerial skill in the months and years to come. And that's the key thing, skill and upskilling ourselves into new team building capabilities, whether that's remote or local. But let me know what you think. Where are you in your remote work journey and how is this really starting to change for new jobs, new companies, the one you may have just left or the one that you just joined? Good, bad, working, broken? But for now, that's five minutes of what you need to lead in your marketing strategy. And as always, I'm Robert Rose. Remember, it's your story to tell. No matter where you tell it from, remember, tell it well. I'll see you next week. Oh,